Welcome back to Magic Gathering Strat. I'm Bava, and this is a continuation of our introduction to Magic the Gathering Online. And this is a brief aside, as it were, and we're going to talk about the actual gameplay um, screen and the options that we have here. So we're playing a solitaire game, so it looks a little bit different, um, namely in that we're taking up the whole screen with our stuff, and in a normal match, um, the screen would cut off right in the middle here and all of our stuff would be down here and our opponent would have uh, similar stuff up here so this is our graveyard area um, here's our icon with our life and stuff so if we were in a two-player match you'd see your opponent's icon up here with their life and their graveyard area and same thing over here we'd have our exile zone revealed cards and effects here and we'd be able to see our opponents up top and it'd be split in the middle of the screen um, we're going to play our creatures out here, our opponent will play the creatures out here, and this part in the middle is called the red zone. Um, playing solitaire is a good way just to sort of show you um, this screen and sort of give you a tour. Um, it can also be a nice way to test decks if you want to uh, goldfish and see uh, how quickly your deck can get there. Now you see even in solitaire we can mulligan if we want to, but we'll go ahead and keep this one. and. Uh, play some stuff. So um, one thing that we can see here are the phases of our turn and we can also see where we've set stops. Now since this is solitaire we can only set stops on our turn because we're the only player playing. And we can do that by making it so that these white spots are all activated. Um, and we can progress from each step in each stage by hitting OK or by hitting the F2 key on our keyboard. Um, they do the same thing hitting this OK button and hitting F2. They let you move, continue, keep going, etc. Um, of course we don't need stops everywhere. For the most part we don't need stops on the upkeep or the draw. Um, we don't need stops in all of these places necessarily, and we usually don't need a stop at the end of combat, though we do like a stop at the beginning of combat. Um, certainly like stops here. Um, stop at the main and stop at the end step. These can all be pretty handy. Um, so during our main phase we'll play a land, and we can do that um, it's by right-clicking and selecting play. Sort of the tough way to do it, but this way you can be sure um, that you're doing things right. Or we can actually just click the land. Now some things that you can undo in life and in magic, but playing a land is not one of them. You see we can right-click on this screen and try to undo it. You can also hit Control z which is an automatic undo but we can't undo playing a land, so make sure you're playing the right land before you do that. Uh, of course we can only play one land a turn, even in solitaire, so we will progress to the end step, hit F2, and progress back. It will skip, untap, upkeep, and draw because we don't have stops there, and it will go straight to our main, at which point it will stop because we've asked it to, and that gives us priority. Um, so we have more land, so we can play an island, so now we just have two land on the screen, and we can get one of our creatures. We'll go ahead and get our Syndic of Tithes by tapping both our land. And you can see here we have um, a little indicator showing which mana we have available. Since we tapped a plains and an island, we have a white mana and a blue mana available. Um, now if we clicked Syndic of Tithes, it would automatically cast it, or we can right click and select cast. Um, and it would automatically use the mana in our pool. If we had different mana available in our pool, for instance, if we had two white mana and a blue mana that we had, uh, for some reason, made available by tapping land, and we tried to cast this, it would automatically use one of the white mana, because it has to, and then it would let us select which other mana we wanted to use to cast the Syndic of Tithes. Um, we'll try that on our next turn just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, we can undo tapping land by right clicking and selecting undo 
or by using Control Z on our keyboard. Um, so we can tap, untap. That is something in life that you can undo. Once we cast a creature, however, with that mana, we cannot undo casting the creature. So we were looking at one way to cast a creature was to tap your land first, then select the creature. The other way, which is sometimes better, is to select the creature and hit cast. Um, your announcement bar will say you need to pay one colorless and one white mana. Once we've tapped that mana, the creature will be cast. Um, since we've used up our mana and we can't do anything else with the Syndic, I'm now going to hit F6. Um, we can do F6, we can also do no possible play yield all, and that will move us right through the end of our turn and back into the next step. I'm just going to hit F6 on my keyboard, and you can see that put us all the way through, and we're now into the next turn. Alright, so um, I'm going to play my island. I'll attack with my Syndic first, and so we're going to go into Begin Combat. Now Begin Combat is the step before we declare our attackers, so we could do something here like uh, cast God's Willing to give this guy protection to remove, so he couldn't be blocked. Um, but we'll move ahead to our attacker step and it says declare attackers, choose your attackers. And you can see he's got a gold aura around him, which means he's somebody that I can choose to attack. Now I can right click and choose who I'm attacking. So for a two-headed giant or if your opponent has a planeswalker, um, you can select where you want this guy to go. Um, or I can just regular left click and he'll move into the red zone, which means that he is somebody who is going to be attacking. Um, so I'll select him as an attacker and hit OK. All right, so now that we have hit OK, we can no longer choose other attackers. So if we had multiple creatures, we would select them all and then hit OK. We're still in the attack step. Um, we, and if we had an opponent, would have a chance to react to choosing attackers. We go into the blocker step. We have a chance, both of me and my opponent, to react here as well. Into the damage step, um, which I don't often have a stop in damage, but we do right now. And then we'll progress through the end combat and into the main step. Um, now we can cast spells, and I did want to show you uh, what it looks like if I tap three land. Um, nope, we need two white land for that to work actually. So let's go ahead and get our uh, a Crowan Skyguard. You can see here this is called um, the stack. This is where the stack shows up. Uh, most of the time we might just have one thing here, but since we had a triggered ability when we cast a spell, that comes in on the stack here. Um, so we can spend white mana to pay extort. Um, with things on the stack, especially triggered abilities that are going to happen often, you can right click on them and um, you'll have the option to yield until end of turn. You can always yield to that triggered ability. So if you have a soul warden who's gaining life every time a creature comes into play, especially if you have multiple of them, um, you might want to always yield to those abilities. Um, it can really help you on the clock if you have a finicky deck that has a lot of triggers happening. Um, abilities that require you to choose yes or no will sometimes have two more options and it'll say always yes, always no. Um, and so you can do both. You could do select always yes and always yield. And that way every time that ability happens it will automatically cycle through for you. So we cannot pay this, we're going to hit cancel. Um, here's the sky guard on the stack, he's going to come into play. And we're going to do the same thing, just to give our sky guard, make our sky guard a little tougher. Bing! And so there we got to choose what we wanted to put on the stack in what order. Uh, sorry, I didn't get to see that that quickly. But those were where uh, things happened before, while they were going on the stack. All right. So now we have the Sky Guard's ability went on the stack, and the Syndic of Ties ability went on the stack. And you can see when we mouse these over, 
it highlights the card they're related to. So if I mouse over this, it highlights the Akroan Sky Guard because it's his ability. This one is this. If I mouse over the Mizium skin, it will show the target, and so you can see the little uh, red triangles and uh, the Sky Guard here. Um, that can be especially helpful sometimes if your opponent's casting a lightning bolt, targeting one of your creatures, you can mouse over the lightning bolt just to make sure which creature they are targeting. Um, so we're going to yield to all of these one at a time. We're just going to hit F2. That'll yield to the first one. We'll hit F2. That'll yield to the next one. We'll hit cancel. And we'll hit F2 and that'll yield the Mizium skin. All right, so our Akron Sky Guard is going to be a little bit bigger next turn. All right, and now I can show you what happens if we have lots of mana tapped. All right, so we have two white and two blue tapped, and I'm gonna cast something that just costs one white and one other. So it automatically used one white because it has to, and now it's letting me pick what I wanna use for the colorless mana. Um, in this case, I wanna use one of my blue mana. So I can either click blue mana here or I can click blue mana up here, and that will um, use that blue mana. All right. Um, we're not going to extort right now, so we'll just hit cancel. We get the sky guard, and so now you can see place triggered abilities on the stack. It'll show the triggered abilities, and we can. Uh, see which syndic is which here and of course the one you place on the stack first is going to be the one that resolves last so uh, the one you're picking here first is the one that will resolve last it will resolve after the one you don't pick so keep that in mind uh, we're going to cancel cancel get our sky guard all right we're going to come in here oh begin combat we don't have anything attack. Come in for four, down to 14 life, into the end step, and then pass the turn. All right, so we've got plenty of mana here now. Um, we're going to go ahead and just keep on trucking. Declare attackers. We'll attack with everybody. We're in the attack step. Moving to the block step, I want to cast an instant. Say he tries to kill this, this sky guard. Um, we're going to cast God's Willing on it. And now you can see we have a whole bunch of triggered abilities to put on there. Um, Syndic and Syndic, we can put those on first. Um, because first we want to make sure that our sky guard gets this plus one, plus one. All right, so we'll do that. He becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Awesome. Um, now we can do this. And I'll say, you can pay a white or a black to do this. So we'll tap a white mana. And now you can see that this OK ability is here. And before it was just cancel. So we'll do that. Um, nothing really happens because I'm losing a life and gaining a life. And as a solitaire player, um, it all evens out. If we had an opponent over there, they would lose a life. And I would gain a life. God's willing, sticks on the sky guard. We'll give it protection from red. And we get to scry one. So the temporary zone, um, this window is resizable, which is really handy. Uh, the temporary zone is what's going to open when you can look at your opponent's hand, um, when you're looking through your opponent's deck, or when you're looking through your deck, for instance, to find a land, or when you're scrying. So sometimes it's just one card, or scrying one. Um, sometimes it's an entire deck, and so you'll want to resize it to make it a bit bigger. Um, in this case, we do not want this guild gate, so we're going to right click. I'm going to say put on bottom. And now we're going to hit our opponent, or in this case ourselves, for a significant amount of damage. And there's nothing else I can do on my turn, so I'm just going to hit F6. And we'll come straight into the next turn. All right, we'll play our Cloudfin Raptor. We'll extort once, because we can. Uh, we don't want to extort the other one, because we're going to play a Wave Crash Triton. So when we cast Grave Crash Triton, we have two triggered abilities. And we'll cancel both of those. When he comes into play, we'll get this other triggered ability. 
And since it's only one, it goes right onto the stack. We don't have to choose. Um, he becomes a 1, 2. And now we can swing in for lethal. Okay, and that was more or less um, everything that you need to know. Um, F2 yields once, F6 yields the entire turn, F3 will get rid of all auto yields, including when you right click on something and say yield all, or when you right click and say always say yes, F3 will remove all of those, um, and that can be quite handy. Um, we didn't talk too much about this area. Um, these are automatically closed off. Um, but we can see when they come in. Um, exile zone, so if you're suspending a card or if you exile something, it'll go to the exile zone. Um, if it's suspended, you can see how many counters are on it over here. Our revealed cards are exactly what they look like. Um, so you can see a history of revealed cards. And then effects, things like shields and stuff will show up in the effects area. Um, chat and log, so we didn't have chat open for this or the log. Um, if if you don't have chat on your screen, you can select this and it will open up your chat screen, which opened up in my other window. Um, so you can have this floating and you can close it and open it again. You can always get it back by clicking chat log here. Um, you can also dock this. So if we want to put this over here, um, this is where I usually like to dock it. Um, and so now we have it docked on the right of our screen. Um, these collapse really nicely with their little icons, and I usually only ever expand this area if I need to look often at my opponent's exiled cards, um, but we can leave it nice and small there. Uh, our card area is resizable, so if we want our cards to be smaller and the battle area to be bigger, um, we can actually set it up so we just see the titles of our cards and make that as small as we want to. Um, and this area is resizable too, but I find the size of this area is often quite good. Um, we can see we did end up with some cards in our discard pile, our graveyard over here. And this is where we can chat if we had someone to chat with. Um, so we don't get to see it right now, but the game log happens here and it sort of gives us a blow by blow in text of what's happening and the chat goes. And that is a rundown of your game screen for Magic the Gathering Online using the beta client. Um, I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon.